Mercury Marine's vessel view display is always evolving to provide all the features that customers demand, so Mercury is proud to introduce the Vessel View 703. This section will be dedicated to going over all the changes and new features of the Vessel View 703. The Vessel View 703 is the successor to the very popular Vessel View 702 display. It has more memory, more computing power, and a higher resolution and better screen technology. The Vessel View 703 will incorporate the Wi Fi Go Free module and Bluetooth capability built into it. The SimRed transducers can be plugged straight into the unit, which eliminates the requirement for a separate sonar box. This will allow boat builders to utilize the same cutout and dash space at the helm. The 703 will be compatible with the bulk of Mercury's vast lineup of engines. This includes all outboards 40 horsepower and up, all smart craft and fuel injected Mercruiser engines, both gas and diesel, and the varying outboard and stern drive offerings from Mercury Racing. Here are the three Vesselview 703 kits that are currently available and their corresponding part numbers. Vesselview links are included in the kits. Here is an image of the hard button layout for the 703. The main screen is a touch screen, but there are hard buttons so users have options. It's good to get familiar with all the functions of the buttons and the touch screen interface. The more use, the better the user will be at navigating the display. Take a second to look over the various buttons and their functions. Let's take a quick look at the home page. The home key will give access to the home page and allow the user to access other NEMA devices that are connected to the network. There is a toolbar on the left, the main applications in the middle, and the favorite bar on the right. The power button can be pressed for quick access to the system settings. Another easy way to gain access to the system settings is by touching the top of the screen and moving your finger down. The system control dialog page will vary depending on the connected equipment in the vessel. The Favorites bar is where users can create custom panel configurations with engine data paired with other various types of data that maybe they would like to use. The displays can be arranged as half vertical, one third vertical, one quarter split screen, and half horizontal. To make a change to an already established custom screen, the user simply has to tap the edit icon or press and hold one of the favorite buttons and select edit options. When a user has a split screen up, for example, the chart plotter and radar, as seen here, the user can adjust the panel size for those two windows. To do that, open the system's control dialog box, tap the adjust splits button to show the resize icon, then drag the resize icon to the preferred panel sizes and then tap the screen to save those settings. Let's now go over the various features and interfaces for the 703. First is the main page or engine page. This view hasn't changed much from the 702. Displayed here is the various data for engines on the vessels. The info displayed will vary depending on the number of engines on the vessel. The Mercury logo in the middle will display a custom list of engine values. At the top, battery values are displayed. The bottom right will display fuel tank values along with graphs. Down in the center bottom, trim scales and numeric values are shown and finally, at the bottom, a large speed gauge can be seen with additional engine information. Now let's go down the control bar menus, starting with the autopilot section. This button will give access to Mercury's autopilot features. Some of the features will vary based on engine type. Within this menu, heading, route, and skyhook will be available. This is also where the new downloadable features for joystick boats will be available. These are the Skyhook Advanced features. 
This will be explored in greater detail later. To note, the downloadable features require the latest joystick systems and the electronic control modules on the joystick system may need to have the firmware updated. Next on the control bar is the vessel control button. Pressing this button will allow access to Mercury engine control features. These features will also vary based on engine type. The biggest change here is the inclusion of active trim. The pad will no longer be needed on the dash and active trim will be controllable on the vessel view. The boat will just need the active trim control module installed. More on this later. The last button on the control bar is the Mercury button. Like on the 702, this button will give the user access to Mercury engine data while viewing other screens, such as a chart plotter. As mentioned earlier, the active trim controls are now built into the user interface of a 703. The control module is still necessary to access this feature on the 703. Here is Kevin Muth, SmartCraft Project Manager, to go over how the Active Trim interface will work in the VesselView 703. A new VesselView function that we have now in Vessel Control is Active Trim. So if I touch on Vessel Control, you can see I have Cruise Control, Troll Control, and then Active Trim. So Active Trim, when it was first released, we had a, a pad that you would mount on the dash or wherever you'd choose, and you can adjust minor profiles, turn it on, turn it off from that pad. Now we've taken that pad, built it into the Vessel View user interface, so you no longer need that pad in the dash. So I'm just going to select Active Trim. And right here, if you're familiar with Active Trim, you see profile number two. So this is the minor profile that I have selected right now. And I've already run this boat. Uh, my major profile on the boat I'm on is about a major profile of one. And then once I picked a major profile of one, I can now select minor profiles very easily anytime I want. So I leave this one. Usually I'm on about a four. So I'm just gonna go up to a four. That's usually where this boat likes to be run. So to turn it on, right now it is on. But then you can see in the bottom it says press to turn off active trim. If I do that, status now goes to off. And now I'm in control. I'm responsible for trimming the boat then. So if I turn it on, active trim is in control. Active trim is going to trim the boat for me. So active trim control is a really great feature. And uh, with active trim control, uh, it, when it's activated on profile four, that profile is a trim profile that pr trims progressively as I accelerate the boat. So to operate this, I'm gonna have it on. I'm gonna start the engine or engines, put them in gear and start accelerating. And if I'm trimmed up too high, when I first put it in gear, they'll actually trim down for me to do a tuck in because we usually tuck the engines in all the way to get it up on plane for better acceleration, better on plane performance. Once we're up on plane, it's gonna progressively trim the engines out based on my GPS speed. So uh, if I wanna override it at any time, if I wanna uh, change the trim angle, I can do that. The active trim will go into a resume status and then there's some auto resume functionality built into it where if I decelerate it or uh, start a new launch, it'll actually just go back into the active trim profile. So it does go into resume, I can reactivate it any time. As mentioned earlier, there is now downloadable content available for joystick boats. These features will be available to all joystick equipped boats with the latest joystick hardware and software, except joystick piloting for inboards. Kevin Muth will now go over how to access these new features on a VesselView 703. So I'm just gonna walk you guys through the VesselView 703. I've got it on my twin Verado joystick piloted outboard boat and it's coupled with our new joystick uh, with the pad built into the joystick and I'm just going to show you some of the new features on the 703. Uh, on this user interface here I've got uh, an autopilot tab and if I just touch this autopilot tab you're going to see a few functions just popped up. So the first one is standby. Standby means that uh, the boat is in standby mode my joystick functions are ready to use. Uh, heading is my heading lock, so it's the same button that you see on your joystick pad. Then route is another button that you see on your joystick pad. And then skyhook, same thing there. Uh, now you can choose to use the buttons on the pad on your joystick, 
or you can choose to use the screen as buttons as well. So either one works. So you kind of have two choices for engaging those features. Down at the bottom, we have a features button. If I touch the features, you can see right here, it says download these Skyhook advanced features for greater bolt control. So this is part of our new downloadable content that's available online. So uh, you go to a website, you're able to download uh, codes, access codes, to actually unlock these features. And the three features that are for sale right now are heading adjust, drift hook, and bow hook. And we'll explain those a little bit. So if I touch on uh, heading, you see heading adjust. And this is just kind of some information on heading adjust. So this is where, when we're in Skyhook, we can now adjust our heading. And we can do adjustments in one degree or 10 degree increments while Skyhook is active. Another one that we have is drift hook. Drift hooks also a skyhook feature, and this allows the boat to lock in a heading when you're in skyhook, but then allow the boat to drift with wind or current while maintaining that same heading. And the last one here is bow hook. If I select bow hook, bow hook is another skyhook feature where when engaged in bow hook control, it's gonna lock the position of the boat but allow the bow to actually swing the swing around with wind or current, still while maintaining position. So to purchase any of these functions and features, you actually go to a website and you're gonna download an access code. Finally, Kevin will now go over the basic operations of the new advanced Skyhook features. So I've got my Vesselview 703 here and I just purchased some downloadable content uh, through Mercury Marine. I've got unlock codes for heading adjustment, drift hook, and for bow hook. So I'm, I'm gonna show you how to enter these codes and unlock those features. So I'm gonna go to the Autopilot tab here and then go down to features. And here are the three that I purchased already. So I'm gonna start with heading adjustment. I'm gonna select it. Here's a little bit more about heading adjustment. And if you click on purchase, it told me where to go to buy it, which is gofreemarine.com. And then there's this Mercury request code. The Mercury request code is the code for this unit. So when I purchase it, it's gonna ask me for that request code online. And uh, that code then will be generated. Then the unlock code that's generated is good for this unit only. So it can't use this code on any other unit. Uh, it pairs it to this one here. So I've got an unlock code. I'm gonna go ahead and enter it in. I'm just going to touch in the field and it brings up a keyboard. So I've got my unlock code entered in here. I'm just going to press enter. And now you see I have a next button here. This was grayed out until I entered that code. So the code's in. I'm going to press next. It says installation was successful. I'll go ahead and close. And that one's done. So I have that one entered. I can then move on to drift hook and then to bow hook. So I already purchased heading adjust. Now I can go on to drift hook. I'm gonna go on to bow hook. I bought all three. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter codes for every one of them. All right, I wanna take you into more detail on some of these autopilot features. We're out in the water running right now. And you can see on the list here, when I, when I touch the autopilot tab, we've got Skyhook at the bottom. You can see Skyhook is illuminated a little bit more than the other ones. The other ones are kind of grayed out, and that's because they're not available right now. And that they're not available because I'm sitting here in neutral, I'm not in gear, I'm not moving, so route and heading are not, not available to me. But Skyhook is. So if I just press the Skyhook screen right there, you can see, uh, you heard the beep, that tells me Skyhook engaged. And then you saw the little pop-up here. It's just a safety warning just to make sure there's nobody in the water for injury uh, hazards. So I can hit continue. And you can see here my current heading is 87 degrees. And uh, that's what I'm locked into right now. So I can control the sky hook from on the screen here, or I can still control it on my pad on my joystick. So either one will work. If I press sky hook button on my control, it turns off on my vessel view. I can turn it back on on my vessel view or back on on my pad on my joystick control. Either one will work. But you can see the colors kind of match up. You get the light ring on the joystick is blue. And you can see the blue of Skyhook on the tab right here as well. So they work together now, which is really a, a cool thing. 
If I want to go in standby mode uh, from the vessel view user interface, I can just hit the red standby button and now I'm back into standby mode. I'm back into control. So I'm on my boat right now. I've got my engines in gear and if you look in my autopilot uh, interface right here, I've got heading right there and heading is lit up. The other ones are grayed out because they're not available right now. Heading is available. I'm in gear. The boat's moving. I can do a heading lock. So I can just press heading. Now the boat's locked into this heading, which is five degrees. If I want to adjust this heading, I can do one degree adjustments right here, or I can do 10 degree adjustments just below it. If I want to use the joystick, I can do that. I can do it by tapping the joystick left or right to do one degree changes, or I can do a twist of the joystick counterclockwise or clockwise to do 10 degree adjustments. So either one works. So right here, my target is four degrees. I can change it by one degree and it'll change it to five, change it to six. So you can do those minor corrections or I can do it with the joystick. Either way will work. If I want to take it out of heading, I can always grab the steering wheel and turn it slightly to break the wheel loose and I'm back into control. I can just hit standby. If you hit standby, you just have to know that the wheel is live and you are in control of the boat. So on this screen here, I'm in my autopilot function and now you see I have route is illuminated and routes on the, uh, and route is illuminated because I've got a waypoint selected. So if I hit route, you'll get a pop-up indicating a warning to maintain your lookout. I can hit confirm. And right now I'm locked into that waypoint. If I was on a route and I had multiple waypoints, it would follow that route. Right now I just have one, but you can see, maintain your lookout. I'm in route control. You can see it on here. If I look down my joystick, you'll see it's locked in on my joystick as well. If I want to take it out of route control, I can hit standby on the user interface of the vessel view, or I can grab the wheel and break the wheel loose, or I can press the button on the joystick. Any one of those will work. 